Hey everybody, Liz Klimek here, Planetary Manager at the South Carolina State Museum, here once again this week to tell you about some more cool things you can see up in the current night sky. Now last week we took a look at some neat things you could see just before sunrise at the beginning of the day in the pre-dawn hours, but this week we're going to go to the opposite part of the day, the end of the day, and talk about some cool things you can see at sunset. So let's go take a look. We are going to go look towards the southwest from right here in Columbia at about a quarter past eight this evening. And I bet if you go out this evening and it's perfectly clear, this object high overhead is going to grab your attention first. We do have a moon and unfortunately it looks like a blob here on the screen, but in the real sky, it'll have a very distinctive shape. To see that shape, we're going to go ahead and zoom up on the moon. So there it is. This is what's called a first quarter moon. It's going to look like a circle that's half lit up. And the moon is going to be heading towards full next week. So as we go on into the weekend and through the weekend and beyond, you'll see more and more of the lit part of the moon until it becomes full. And the moon is beautiful to look at with or without a telescope. You can see these smooth dark patches. They're ancient lava flows called maria. And if you do have a pair of binoculars or a small telescope, you can see more features. You can see craters and mountain ranges and lots of neat geological features but we'll go ahead and zoom out from the moon here. And I bet after the moon, what grabs your attention next is going to be this bright object over here. This will look like a blazingly bright star in the sky, sometimes gets mistaken for an airplane, but it's neither of those. This is going to be the planet Venus. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like up close. So there we go, looks like the moon does sometimes. Right now it kind of looks like a thick crescent. And Venus here is enshrouded in clouds, which are very reflective, and so when sunlight bounces off all those clouds in all directions, that helps make Venus look like a dazzlingly bright star in the sky when it's not a star at all, but a planet in our solar system. I'll go ahead and zoom out on that. And you can see both Venus and the moon looking towards the west and southwest tonight before it even starts to get dark. But there's lots more to see after it does get dark, so we'll go ahead and fast forward time here and watch the last of evening twilight fade away. And as that happens, brighter objects are going to pop out first followed by dimmer and dimmer things, and maybe you can start to see patterns that you recognize or that are familiar to you and maybe remind you of something. And as you can see, as it gets dark here, Venus is going to sink lower and lower towards the horizon and trees and buildings might start to block your view of it. But that moon is still nice and high overhead. We're going to stop here about an hour past sunset at a quarter past nine. So hopefully that's not too late for you. And as you can see, the moon is still high overhead. Speaking of things that are high overhead, if we kind of swing around here and go take a look at the northern part of the sky, high overhead are two pretty famous patterns of stars, the Big and the Little Dipper. Now the Big Dipper is probably the most famous pattern of stars, not an official constellation, it's an unofficial constellation or an asterism, but a lot of people see these three stars here forming a curvy handle and then these four stars forming a bowl. So if you imagine a saucepan that's maybe tipped upside down right now, that's what a lot of people see. But as I said, the Big Dipper is not an official constellation, but it is part of one called the Big Bear. So I'm going to show you all the stars in the Big Bear here. So imagine if this is the head of the bear, and this is the body, and this is the tail of the bear, and the these stars make the back leg of the bear and the front legs of the bear. She's kind of doing a backflip over the sky. That's what this pattern of stars is supposed to be. I'll show you some artwork here to help out your imagination. 
So there's our big bear in the sky and that Big Dipper is the back half of the bear. Now if you use the front two stars in the bowl of the Dipper, you can find the Little Dipper. So if you follow these stars away from the Dipper, away from the bear, in pretty much a straight line, you're going to come to this star right here. And that's going to be our North Star called Polaris, which marks the end of the handle of the Little Dipper. So here are the stars in the Little Dipper. And the Little Dipper is also Ursa Minor, or the Little Bear. So you can kind of think of it as Mama Bear keeping an eye on Baby Bear throughout the night. Now, I'm not an animal expert, but I have never seen bears with tails quite that long and fluffy. If you have, definitely let us know and where to see them. But I like to say they're space bears, so they get a pass. But actually, if you're interested in Greek and Roman mythology, I encourage you to look up the story behind the two bears here. And the story does give an explanation as to why those bears have unusually long and fluffy tails the way that you see them here. But I hope this gives you plenty of ideas of things you can go out and look for in the current night sky. And I'm going to pop back in here and just say thank you so much for joining us this week. And I hope you're able to step away from your computers and just get some fresh air tonight. Go out and enjoy the stars, whether you look for the moon, Venus, and the Dipper specifically, or look for some other things. Just go out, enjoy the night, and take care, stay safe, and we hope to see you again next week.